The Amazing Spider-Man's issues number 50 to 52 features the debut of the most, one of my favorite iconic Marvel villains in the Marvel Universe, the rise of the Kingpin where he takes over. So, came out in August, September, July 1967, that era. So we still get this clever Stan Lee written Spider-Man comic books which is nice. There comes a time in every superhero's life where they waste an issue, filler issue, where they want the superhero to quit. And that's what we get in this issue. Spider-Man's grades are slipping and Aunt May is ill and sick in the hospital as usual. So he pitches his costume and because he's not getting paid any money and he pitches it in the alleyway and we get the iconic image of him walking away from the Spider-Man costume and, and some guy ends up finding it and it's selling it to J. Jonah Jameson so it's in his office and then we get the this is also the issue that inspired Spider-Man 2 they took the kind of this storyline and used it in Spider-Man 2 then we get the very first appearance and some great lines from the kingpin himself and he makes plans to expand his empire and become the lord of the underworld and so now that spider-man is gone um, kingpin starts blackballing a few goons and a few of his guys and other mobsters to come head mobster then he sends them out on their first mission and about that time that's when Spider-Man makes his comeback. He steals his costume back from J. Jonah Jameson and he catches the Kingpin's goons in action. So they come back and they're all pissed off because Kingpin made a bad plan and Kingpin is has so much self-confidence. Oh, I never make mistakes. Whatever. So he gets challenged by the goons. They don't think he's that strong. and This is where he demonstrates his strength and agility. That's right, agility. He's like the size of two men, but he has the strength and the movability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spider-Man. So we get the first confrontation of, so obviously, Kingpin puts his goons back into place. And then they form another plan, and Spider-Man returns, and it's, we get the first matchup of Kingpin and Spider-Man. And Spider-Man underestimates him. He doesn't expect him to move that fast. And we actually get Spider-Man being getting his ass kicked. Actually, they go blow for blow for a while. But what ends up happening is his tie pin, as you might know. See, Kingpin has no super strength. I mean, he has no superpowers. He's just got incredible strength, smarts, and agility. And he's also got the uh, gadget of the cane as his weapon and the tie pin that shoot out smoke. So that uh, incapacitates Spider-Man. He's able to tie him up and he, and he ends up kidnapping J. Jonah Jameson because J. Jonah Jameson suspected the Kingpin takeover now that Spider-Man isn't patrolling the streets of New York City. So he writes about it in his paper because there's nothing else to write about. So that pisses off the Kingpin. So he throws them both in this watery grave room and it's filling up and then obviously Spider-Man wakes up and he saves them both with like an air bubble and a web and a spider web. And then we get the second confrontation of Spider-Man versus the Kingpin. Round two. This is classic. He ends up getting a really nice blow in the broad side of Kingpin's chest and knocks him down, but he bounces back up and he Spider-Man compares it to a basketball and he ends up going to his library and pulling out a book and entering like a secret contraption to like a, skip, a secret escape route to bounce out of there and that's what happens. And that's the end of it, the three issues. The Kingpin flees through the trap door. Order's restored. J. Jonah Jameson still hates Spider-Man, of course, and that's the end. I give it a B. This was JBM, another comic book review. I'm out.